I'm excited today because my friend Marina Von Bergen is here, a very special person who is a specialist in emotional intelligence. She's an experienced leadership coach and consultant who helps executives and rising stars increase their emotional intelligence and improve their communication skills. She spent nearly two decades working with executives in a wide range of organizations and industries and has witnessed firsthand the extent to which emotional intelligence and communication skills can play a critical role role in driving a leader's long-term growth and success. She's learned to skillfully leverage the deeply emotional and also highly intellectual sides of her own personality and now teaches others to manage their full range of positive and negative emotions in the workplace. She's lived and traveled all over the world. She's a true global citizen, giving her a unique perspective that enables her to authentically connect with individuals from all walks of life. She got a ton of certifications. I'm not going to go through them all. There's just so many here. And she's got a bachelor's degree in communications and a master's degree in global workforce collaboration and, and and all these wonderful skills. And not only that, she speaks fluent Spanish and French. Gosh, I'm glad you're my friend. <laughs> You make that all sound really good, Tony. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, you're welcome. I mean, congratulations on all your success. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. You've got so much to share, and I can't wait to get into this because we know that um, IQ is only a small part of most people's success, but EQ is, you know, sometimes 80 or 90 percent of a person's success. And you being the highly skilled expert, I'm excited to get into this with you. Tony, thank you so much. Thanks for the great intro. I'm so excited to be here with you. And thanks for having me on. So what got you going on EQ? How did with all these different things that you've studied, how did EQ catch your attention? Well, it's, it's been a natural fit for me just throughout my whole life. I'm a very emotional person, but I'm also very, very cognitive and intellectual. So I like to bring both of these things together. Um, and I also think that as humans, first and foremost, we're emotional beings. Our first response is always emotional. And then we, we do our thinking around um, whatever the stuff that's going on. So... I, I, I came to it because it's deeply ingrained in who I am as a person, and I love just the words emotional intelligence, right? So you have both sides of, of the personality there, and bringing them together is, is it's beautiful alchemy and, and can help us so much in all aspects of life. You bet. And if, if I ask you to describe emotional intelligence, just give a short description, how would you do that? Uh... That's a great question. Um, as you know, everybody has their own definition and everybody has, there are so many different definitions out there by a ton of different experts. Most simply stated, I would say that it's one's ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions, and then also recognize, understand, and influence the emotions of others. So... If I if I improve my emotional quotient, if I if I um, do better in that area, what, what what kind of outcomes and benefits would I expect if I'm doing a better job managing that part of myself? That's an interesting. It's a good, quick, great question as well. So we look at this from a couple different sides. One is just the personal side, and you as a person. So you, Tony, if you increase your emotional intelligence, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to probably feel more centered you'll have a greater amount of self-awareness and self-understanding and self-management. And really to be effective with others, especially in leadership positions um, and within organizations, that's really the starting point and the foundation. So if you extend that beyond yourself, you can really build connection and rapport with those around you. And it's not just with the people that work for you, but it's also those that you collaborate with um, and, and your superiors and everybody in the executive and leadership suite too. So it comes down to self-understanding, self-management, self-improvement, but really from a leadership perspective, it's about influence. So the more you can increase your emotional intelligence, the more you can influence others because they you build a rapport with them, and then they can also increase their respect towards you as well. So um, 
Yeah, it improves your communications, reduces conflict, reduces tensions, can increase your productivity. But again, as a leader, what are we always looking for? We're looking for influence. And emotional intelligence, honestly, I think it's one of the best ways to, to increase your influence overall. So let's talk about the other side of the coin. So low, so low EQ. Do people who have high emotional intelligence get frustrated with people who have low? <laughs> you do. They do. However, those with the higher emotional intelligence have a greater sense of self-awareness, which also tends to give them a, set, a greater sense of inner stability and, and inner awareness which helps them kind of manage that frustration a little bit again because that goes towards managing their own emotions if that makes sense sure so then the the folks with the low emotional quotient so so what what are the things that are causing them to suffer from from having a low one yeah so we find typically that people with particularly low emotion t emotional intelligence they um, have a really hard time, I shouldn't say really hard, it's all relative, but they have a harder time connecting with other people. Um, they tend to not do as well in organizations because they they don't really know how to connect with others and they don't know how to manage themselves within within the organization. So um, I go back to something that you said at the, at the very beginning of the conversation around the importance of, of emotional intelligence in general and a recent study um, showed that more than two thirds of employers value emotional intelligence over IQ. So those who don't work on their emotional intelligence are at a real disadvantage because they don't have the self-awareness and they're not able to manage their emotions um, effectively in the workplace. So if I, so, so just thinking about this and your experience when you visit with an organization or a company about improving employees EQ, what are some of the blockages or roadblocks or objections they have for that? Well, unfortunately, I still run into situations where companies, organizations, even sometimes some HR organizations, um, they view emotional intelligence as a soft skill that's not necessarily worth investing in. Unfortunately, I mean, I know it's hard to believe that that still exists <laughs> in this day and age, but I still run into that. I also find sometimes that organizations that um, are very um, homogenous, that have very little diversity within their internal population, they tend to be a little less interested in emotional intelligence because um, they, they, hire to, they tend to hire people that are similar to themselves. And that reduces, by almost definition, conf internal conflicts because they're dealing with people that are like-minded. And so they don't necessarily see a lot, they don't see as much value um, in investing in emotional intelligence as other organizations where you see that global organizations where they span across regions and continents and cultures and languages. I, I, I tend to see there that organizations um, are a lot more open and willing to, to invest in emotional intelligence of their employees. Sure. So the connection is valued a lot more or they may yeah. see they may see the connection as possibly being more difficult exactly um i think the first time i heard about emotional intelligence was in the 90s um dr daniel goleman i think is where maybe i heard about it from from at the beginning well how has it changed what are some of the changes or trends that, you, that you've seen over the years as eq has evolved and grown so, yeah, Daniel Goleman, thank goodness for him. He really changed the way everybody thinks about emotional intelligence. And, and his book was truly the pivotal point um, in this industry. So the good news is that since then, since he wrote that book, um, there's been a, a really big change in perception around the importance of emotional intelligence. And he really popular, popularized um, the whole concept. But you're right, that was a long time ago, and things have changed a lot. So at this point, the good news is that we're seeing um, we're seeing an uptick right now in the interest in emotional intelligence in general. Um, for example, uh, the hotel brand, the Crown Plaza, the perfect example of a company right now that's providing most of its employees in its European hotels emotional intelligence training this year. So we're starting to see an uptick. That's just one example of many. Um, 
organizations are investing more now in what's called soft skills. I hesitate to call emotional intelligence a soft skill because there's so much bona fide research around it that shows unequivocally that there is a big impact on, on performance and the bottom line as emotional intelligence increases. So, but it is still considered a soft skill. Um, so organizations are willing to invest more in that these days. The other thing, Tony, is that with the increase of artificial intelligence and, and machines, um, autom automation taking over many hard skills, soft skills are becoming even more valuable to employers. So I have to quote here, Bill Benjamin, and he's an EQ expert, and um, he found that emotional intelligence counts for twice as much as technical and intellectual skills combined. That's what he's seen in the workplace. And I have to say that, that I agree with that. So as organizations move towards automation, um, emotional intelligence is going to become even more important than it already has been. Wow. You know, we've got this uh, very high-paced, mobile, uh, fast-paced type environment that we live in now, and everybody wants the microwavable, yeah. you know, give it to me, <laughs> give it to me as yeah. fast as you can. So yeah. we've probably already um, piqued some interest in some folks about improving their EQ. What are some of the fastest ways to do it? That's a great question. Everybody does want a quick fix. The good thing about EQ is that it can be improved over time. One of the one of the things I always do with my clients first is have them take an assessment. Tons of assessments out there around measuring your EQ. Um, my personal favorite, the one that I'm certified in, is the EQI 2.0. So I ask them to take that, we review it in detail, and through that we identify some areas of weakness, and then we, we focus on those. So the fastest way really to improve your EQ is to identify where your weaknesses are in that area, and then, and then, and then focus on improving them. So you mentioned the assessment. Do you have any other tools that you recommend or use or yeah there again and that's my personal favorite but there are others as well um let's see there's the emotional and social competence inventory the esei psychology today has a really good one mind tools has a good one but for me as a coach um and working with with teams within organizations there are some some more creative ways of, of going about improving your EQ. There are fun things like board games and coaching cards. I do think that coaching is one of the best ways because a skilled coach is always going to help you not only hone in on your areas of weakness, but coach you through um, how to improve that within the workplace specifically targeted to that individual. So it could be, you know, role playing 360s with, with peers and, and people all around them. So coaching, I think, is one of the fastest and best tools in general. Um, and I know this is going to sound cliche, but I have to throw this out there. Um, this is going to sound like a really big soft tool, soft skill as well, but journaling and, and notebooking. So writing down throughout the day or journaling at night in the morning how you've gone through that day or how you intend to go through the day from an emotional perspective within the workplace can be really powerful because it forces you to go within and become self-aware and, and, and contemplate your, your inner space before you go out there in, into the workforce. You know, one particular exercise that I've used uh, before, and I'll share this with you, and you may have even used it yourself, but I've used journaling with uh, clients where I would have them just journal things either in the morning or at night that they're thinking about just their thoughts. But I tell them not to read it till the end of the week. Mm -hmm. Like go ahead and journal every night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then, then on Saturday, go back and read everything you wrote Monday through Friday. Yeah. Um, and I like that. That's that, great. Seems, that seems to work uh, pretty well. And I, I'm, I'm pretty guilty uh, as far as really honing in on organizations and uh, corporate initiatives and high performance. But what about personal? I mean, in people's personal life, how does EQ play a role for that? So that's an interesting question. Uh, I think the mis a mistake that people make sometimes is they, they separate the work life from the home life. But emotional intelligence transcends everything that you do as part of who you are. It's, it's, it's essential. It's core. And so I, I try to dissuade my, my clients from thinking about, okay, 
I'm going to focus on my emotional intelligence in the workplace. My approach is that's great. Let's focus on that. Let's do your assessment and hone in on that. But you know what? Your emotional intelligence is going to help you in all areas of your life. So don't think of it as something to apply at work, but, but as something that you're going to apply in all that you do. It's more of a mindset and a worldview. And yeah, it's important to know when to be situational. And that comes with uh, part of having a high emotional intelligence is knowing how to act in certain situations. So you're not going to act always the same at home as you do at work and vice versa. And increasing your emotional intelligence helps you navigate situations in all areas of your life. So yeah, to the extent that you can think about emotional intelligence as a part of who you are, as opposed to something that's situational, I think that's, that's helpful. So I, I, I've got a question just for you, Marina, just are, are there times where as a person who's obviously studied this, you become certified and of course, repetition builds skills. So you work with clients and all of this, you know, you probably have a pretty high EQ, but are there times where you can just be Marina and turn it down? I would have to say, Tony, no. Um, because like I, it's like I was just saying, it's, it's part of who I am. I'm, I'm so in tuned with other people all the time. Um, the more you do something, the more you become good at it, the more it just becomes ingrained in every fiber of your, of your being. And my emotional intelligence radar is, it's always up because it's, it's just who I am. Uh huh. And, and, and you feel like that's, that's really good thing for you, right? Personally. I do. You know, I, I have to say sometimes it's a little bit of a double edged sword because you're right. My, my, my EQ score is, is quite high. Um, it's actually very high and yes, that's great in a lot of situations, but it does have its downfalls too. And it's important to think about that. Um, you don't want to be too high on any scale because there are, there are downsides of that in, in any situation. So that's also something that I work through with my clients. This is if you score really high in some areas, you do need to kind of tone that down in some ways. Well, the reason I'm asking is because I've had that question to ask of me before. It's like, mm -hmm. Tony, do you ever just turn it off? Like you're, you're just so aware of everything right, that's right. going on, you know, and I, I don't, I don't really turn it down either. And I'm, right. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's probably something that you don't even think about because it's probably largely ingrained in who, or who you are too. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I, and I think back to when I wasn't really as much that way and think about all the things I, I always think about, I don't want to miss anything. Right. You know, it's, it's why I, I didn't want to go to bed as a kid, you know, cause I just thought, man, I'm going to miss things if I sure, sure. go to sleep, you know, but, but I think, I, I think learning about EQ kind of honed that, um, thing that was in me already, you know, why do you think EQ has become kind of a big deal in organizations today? You know, I, I, I think that as time has gone by, um, organizational cultures in general have become more open and understanding to, again, these quote unquote soft skills. Um, I think Daniel Goleman is, was a big factor. Um, the fact that his book did have research behind it. Um, he had a certain amount of credibility and people within organizations were able to digest that and assimilate it in ways that I think were previously unavailable. That's it from a practical side, but I have to say from just a human side, it goes back to what I was saying before. You know, I think that humans by nature are more emotional than anything else. And so EQ resonates with who we are and, and we like it. We connect to it because we all see ourselves um, as emotional beings. And so we like to connect with that side of ourselves and we like it to have an excuse to do that within, organi within organizations, I think too, you know, to bring that human element in more than we have in the past. So uh, we've talked about each other. We've talked about ourselves. Do you have a, a, an example or a case study that you could share with our listeners of a, of a success story that you've worked on with someone else? Uh, yeah, I can think of a client that I'm, I'm just kind of wrapping up with actually. Um, so she is a woman, let's see, she's probably in her early forties. She works in a tech company with, I'd say maybe around 500 people. Um, she's in a leadership role. Uh, she's pretty aggressive, uh, in a very male dominated, 
uh, sales organization. And when I was first brought in, it was because she was considered a little too abrasive um, and she would put some people off and be uh, not, not know how to really develop relationships. So we took the, she took the EQI 2.0 assessment. There were a couple of areas that she scored really low in, which made complete sense given the feedback that we were getting from the people around her. Uh, so we, we focused on, it was impulse, impulse control, um, which is, uh, resisting or delaying the impulse to act. So we put together a coaching program for her. We started with uh, a number of 360 assessments with people around her to get a, a benchmark. Um, let's see, we had coaching sessions every two weeks and we focus on her self-awareness and her impulse control. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm sure Tony, you probably see this as well in your own coaching practice, but it takes time for major changes to, to take effect and for behaviors to really change. So we've really focused in on that one particular aspect um, of her personality challenge, cha challenges. And uh, it took us nine months, but eventually she was able to really modify her behavior, really control it. Her, her, her score in that area did improve. And um, at the end of the nine months, we did another series of 360 assessments and everybody around her agreed that she had really improved in that area. So I'm very pleased to announce that she was promoted to SVP. Um, wow. Yeah, so she she was willing to focus on that one aspect um, and that made her successful and that made us successful as a team. And of course, as you know, that's what it takes, right? You have to be a willing uh, and motivated participant to see real and lasting change over time. Well, that's what I was going to say is, yeah, these things take time and that's if the client wants to work. Right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, we're visiting with Marina Von Bergen. She is the, with the Von Bergen Group. Listen, thanks for being on today. I really appreciate you doing this. Tony, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and all of your listeners. Yeah, we, we'll do this again sometime. That'd be great. Receive weekly coaching tips from Tony Richards, delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a CEO or an entrepreneur, Tony can help you reach your goals and give you a competitive edge within your industry. Tony's Monday Morning Coaching Memo covers topics ranging from leadership development to teamwork to company culture and more. Text the word leadership to 38470 to sign up for Tony's Monday Morning Coaching Memo or sign up online at clearvisiondevelopment.com.